All right. Um, I think we should go ahead and get started if everyone's ready. Looks like we all are. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Nick Schramick. I am the Director of International Relations at Silicon Valley Forum in Silicon Valley. And this is our uh, our second in a two-part series on uh, on technology in Qatar, and this series, the, this this webinar in particular, is focused on ag tech. So this webinar entitled "Ag Tech Solutions: Building Resilient Smart uh, Building Smart and Resilient Food Systems in Qatar" will focus on uh, the state of food uh, security and technology within Qatar and some opportunities going forward for uh, global companies to uh, to assist in building a a smart, secure, and safe food future for Qatar. Uh, I'm joined here by a, a host of uh, wonderful speakers who we will be introducing shortly. But before I go any further, I wanted to uh, briefly introduce Silicon Valley Forum. So Silicon Valley Forum is a nonprofit in the Bay Area, if you do not know already. Uh, we've been around for 37 years and our focus is really on connecting the world to Silicon Valley and Silicon Valley to the world. So we hold programs around the world. We work with governments, corporates, nonprofits, and do a lot of work in the startup ecosystem here. So we are uh, delighted to uh, partner uh, for this webinar series with the Embassy of Qatar as well as the U.S. Qatar Business Council. And with that, I'd like to introduce my uh, co-host, Mohamed um, Barakat, who is the um, who is the Managing Director of the U.S. Qatar Business Council. Mohamed. Thank you, Nick. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for being with us today. We're very glad to host the second uh, uh, series of the Tech in Qatar and Advancements in Qatar webinar um, in collaboration with Silicon Valley Forum and the Embassy of the State of Qatar, the Office of the uh, commercial attaché, the Qatari commercial attaché in, in Washington, D.C., and our um, esteemed guests today and speakers that uh, will cover a lot of uh, what Qatar has been doing and will be doing and how Americans can connect. Um, a little bit about the U.S. Qatar Business Council. We're a non-for-profit trade association based in uh, Washington, D.C., um, with our offices as well in, in Doha, Qatar. Um, we work to uh, expand and advance the bilateral relationship commercially and trade and investment between the United States and Qatar, help American companies uh, uh, expand and enter the Qatari market, as well the Qatari companies uh, exploring opportunities in, uh, in the U.S. market. Um, it's both ways, and uh, we've been proud doing this since 1996, and we hope to continue advancing this, and this is part of what we do in these programs is introduce opportunities for the American companies and as well connect them to their Qatari uh, partners through the US QVC, our partners in different places in the United States and the commercial attache office uh, in Washington, DC. Um, uh, thank you, Nick, I appreciate uh, 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 the introduction. Um, in, uh, I'll, I'll think we're, we're gonna start by introducing our keynote speaker today. Mr. Fahd al um, the Qatar commercial attaché uh, based in Washington, D.C. He's the first uh, commercial attaché to serve in Washington, D.C. since uh, 2019. Uh, he also represents the uh, Qatar Investment Promotion Agency uh, in, in the United States. Um, he has an extensive professional experience in commercial relationship trade. Um, he served uh, in many departments, international co collaboration, Qatar Ministry of Commerce and Industry, um, he as well participated in many GCC trade uh, uh, negotiations uh, with China and as well uh, uh, within uh, uh, the World Trade Organization. Um, he is a graduate from the American University and he holds uh, several professional certificates uh, from many organizations, including as well the International uh, World Trade uh, Organization. Fahad, uh, we're glad that you're with us today. Appreciate taking the time. And we look forward for your uh, speech. Thank you. Thank you, Nick and Mohammed. Thank you so much. Friends and colleagues, I'm very pleased to be able to meet with you today. I would like to thank the Silicon Valley Forum and the US Qatar Business Council for organizing this event, as well as the distinguished representatives from Qatar Development Bank, Hassad Food, and Arable Labs for graciously volunteering your time. Thank you as well to you all of taking the time to participate today, especially during this unprecedented challenging period. I'm happy to have the chance to speak with you today because while this period has indeed been difficult for all of us, it has also helped to reveal our strengths. 
In Qatar, we have experienced some challenges along with the rest of the world. But despite these difficulties, years of prudent planning have left us in a strong position with significant capital buffers and ample liquidity to withstand this stress. And our rapid response to the virus have, has left us in a position now where there are less than 3,000 infection cases nationwide and nearly all offices are fully operational with most workers back to work. Qatar is well positioned for a rapid recovery. With our economy, while a number of sectors have shown impressive resiliency, our ag agriculture sector has stood out as particularly strong. This is in large part due to efforts undertaken in recent years to improve our food security. Prior to the 2017 blockade, Qatar met 90% of its food needs through imports. We recognize the risk this uh, presented and engaged an aggressive, well-coordinated st strategy to address it. Due to this effort, in just few short years, Qatar became ranked among the most food secure nation globally. This strength proved critical uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Qatar had already put in place the correct pieces to, uh, to manage through the crisis. As a result, Qatar's agriculture sector has experienced no shortage at, of any kind throughout the past year. Indeed, the sector continues to grow at rate similar to, these, to those seen prior to the pandemic. In fact, Qatar's agriculture market is projected to grow 6.3% through 2020 to 2025. The increase in the adoption of advanced farming technologies and conducive government policies supporting domestic crop production are some of the factors driving the market growth in the, in the country. Qatar is aiming to self-sufficiency in agriculture product by encouraging our farmers to adopt advancing farming techniques while also lower the carbon footprint. To that end, we are constantly striving to improve. However, work remains to develop the agriculture sector and fully realize our ambitious goals outlined in the Qatar National Vision 2030. Technology will be critical to this effort. For example, our limited access to water creates economic opportunities for U.S. companies to provide recycling, conservation, and desalination technological expertise. Achieving efficiency is also vital for agricultural sector in Qatar, creating the need for advanced farming techniques such as uh, aquaponics and vertical farming, as, as well as advanced technological solutions like data analytics. These are just examples of the range of opportunities in Qatar for ag tech firms that we will discuss today. As we continue to work to realize our vision for the agriculture sector, we are confident that the United States will be a central partner. The United States is already our most important trading partner and our economic ties have never been stronger. Our bilateral trade is in at an all time high. More than 700 US companies already operate in Qatar. Our investment in each country support tens of thousands of jobs. All told, our economic partnership today is worth than more than $200 billion. But in Qatar, we believe that we have only just begun to realize the economic opportunity in our partnership. There, there, uh, there remains enormous potential for our economic ties to grow to our mutual benefit. Cooperation in agriculture and particularly in, in ag tech represent a clear path toward further developing 
the already strong Qatar-US economic relationship. To help bring this about, in Qatar, we are working to create a world-class environment for business that gives all companies, and particularly technology companies, the greatest opportunity for success. Qatar has long been among the world's most effective, attractive tax and regulatory environment. Now, foreign companies are also able to repatriate 100% of their profits, as well as retain 100% ownership of their business and their technology. Technology companies can be confident in their ability to control their intellectual, intellectual property with strong protections in place. A range of other reforms have been undertaken to ensure that Qatar and that in Qatar, foreign companies find an optimal business environment. We engage in these efforts because in Qatar, we recognize that technology and expertise, particularly from the United States, are essential to our ability to achieve our nation, national vision. So I welcome our discussion today to explore ways we can work together. In Qatar, I'm confident that U.S. ag tech companies will find remarkable opportunities and ideal environment for success. I look forward to the tremendous mutual benefit we can achieve through our collaboration, and I'm excited to have the chance to discuss it with you today. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Fahad. I uh, appreciate uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the remarks. Uh, what a fascinating uh, information, and we always learn more about Qatar expanding and uh, doing more for uh, 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 to ease doing business in Qatar and allow more companies to enter Qatar. And we're happy to hear this always in the U.S., uh, where it actually can push more American companies there. I also uh, know that we have a, a video prepared by the economic team of the Embassy of Qatar and uh, yeah, the Office of the Commercial Attaché will play now. <laughs> Qatar is committed to providing quality food to its population and has achieved major successes in food security in just a few years. Today, Qatar is ranked number one in the MENA region and number 13 globally for food security. Hamad Port is playing a critical role in Qatar and in the region as a food hub for strategic reserves, food processing, and food distribution. The Ministry of Municipality and Environment is encouraging investment in agriculture and food production sector by developing more hydroponic greenhouses, investing in fish farming, and creating central food labs. Business opportunities for American firms exist in a range of areas, including advanced technologies in agriculture, intensive animal farming, desalination and wastewater treatment facilities, food standards, food waste management, food processing, cold storage facilities, R&D, animal health, and imports of key foods. For more information about doing business and investing in Qatar, please contact the Office of the Commercial Attaché at the Embassy of the State of Qatar in Washington, D.C. Thank you uh, as well, for uh, Fahad, for your team and for the uh, Economic uh, uh, Office uh, at the Embassy of the State of Qatar. Um, we're always um, proud to collaborate with the Embassy, with His Excellency the Ambassador Sheikh Mish'al, um, the economic team led by Hassan Al Khalifa, uh, uh, of course, uh, you, uh, Fahad, and your team, um, to uh, to bring more to, to the Americans uh, uh, the information that they need to be able to do business in Qatar, to invest in Qatar, and do more in Qatar. Um, with that, I want to actually move towards our our first uh, uh, a part of uh, uh, today's webinar. Um, we have two ext uh, uh, extinguished guests today uh, that from Qatar Development Bank and from Hassad Food that they will highlight and give us um, some updates and as well provide us some information on what, what is Qatar doing uh, to advance uh, investments in agriculture, food, food security, uh, and as well, what, what could be the market for American companies there from technology, from involvement, from investment. Um, so I'm proud today to start with uh, uh, our uh, first uh, speaker, uh, Mr. Khaled Al-Man, uh, Executive Director of Business Finance for Qatar Development Bank. 
um, Mr. Khaled will today uh, highlight Qatar Development Bank um, initiatives uh, in, in the ag uh, and uh, tech investments and as well how they collaborate with everyone else. A um, little bit about uh, Mr. Khaled. Uh, he's, of, as we mentioned, the Executive Director of Business Finance of Qatar Development Bank. Um, he leads developing finance, uh, the, the most uh, important part uh, uh, as a financing body for the growth of the private sector in Qatar. Um, he is also the current chairman of the Middle East Leadership Academy and chairman of uh, Ashams Advanced uh, Lighting Technologies. Mr. al Mani holds a Bachelor of Science in Finance uh, from King Fahad University uh, of Petroleum and Mineral, and as well an MBA from HAC Paris, and has also received uh, specialized diplomas from London Business School and uh, Brookings Institute. Uh, Mr. Khaled, uh, I would like to welcome you with us today. And I know we have uh, uh, some remarks from you and uh, uh, a presentation, uh, please. Thank you, um, Mohammed, for the introduction. And thank you for the US Qatar Business Council and Silicon Valley and the Embassy of Qatar for organizing this event. I think it's important to uh, build the cooperation between Qatar and the rest of the world. And uh, you guys in the US Qatar Business Council have been very active over the past 10 years and uh, have done a lot in this field. So really uh, thank you for all your efforts and your uh, energy in making uh, the connections and making uh, Qatar visible for uh, people in the United States and companies in the United States. Um, uh, of course, as you mentioned, uh, Mr. Mohammed, I am here representing Qatar Development Bank. And the Qatar Development Bank is um, a government-owned bank uh, which is mandated with promoting the private sector in Qatar. Uh, as we all know, Qatar is very um, uh, famous for many things, but all, uh, very in, in, the, in the commercial space, very famous for being an oil and gas exporter. Uh, and uh, there have been a lot of development, especially in the 80s and the 90s, in developing Qatar's uh, hydrocarbon uh, position as a world leader. Of course, this success also comes with a lot of uh, um, uh, challenges. And one of the main challenges is diversifying Qatar's economy. And this is our job here in Qatar Development Bank, where we work with institutions uh, inside Qatar to develop a domestic um, uh, uh, economy and as well to develop local enterprises that are, be, that are able to contribute their products, not just locally, but as well in the world uh, markets. Um, we are a, a bank with the capital of 12 billion Qatar Riyals, uh, and we are currently have 8 billion Qatar Riyals in uh, loans uh, given to uh, approximately 1,000 um, uh, companies uh, that, ha that are benefiting from these loans. One of the main sectors that we uh, target is uh, providing support, uh, uh, financial and non-financial support, and I'll come to the non-financial bit in a moment, but uh, uh, providing uh, support to the uh, companies that are uh, in the food, uh, um, in, in, in the in the food security field, and agriculture has been a hot topic uh, for Qatar, especially in the past three years after the blockade of Qatar. Uh, and as Fahad mentioned uh, earlier, this accelerated the country's desire and the private sector's desire to develop, uh, you know, in, uh, farms and industry. In the, um, in, the, in the food uh, security space. Uh, a lot has happened in the past three years. A lot has uh, been uh, very active in the past three years. Uh, and we as well have been very active uh, in the past three years. Um, but of course, and, uh, we were also active before the three years and that I think helped us a lot uh, to overcome the challenges that we faced. Uh, so we had already ambitions and plans to develop the security, the food security even before the, the blockade. Now, uh, with uh, that, I, I want to as well highlight a little bit of what we do 
in terms of uh, providing help to companies. Because I did mention the numbers around the banking and our numbers around what we do in terms of loans, but that's not only what we have uh, in our uh, portfolio. We are also very active in uh, other areas. One of them is providing uh, incubation and acceleration uh, services. Um, we own one of the biggest incubators in the Middle East, which is called Cubic Qatar Business Incubation Center. Uh, and this incubation center is directed towards industry. We also have started something called the Sports Accelerator, uh, which was part of our um, uh, you know, roadmap towards from now until 2022 to as well develop a sports industry here in Qatar. And we've been active in the sports industry in the past two years. We have also uh, a fashion incubator with, where we started just recently. Uh, our ambition, and we are thinking seriously to have a agriculture incubate, incubation uh, activity. This is something in study and perhaps something that we can work with, with companies in the United States uh, to develop. Um, I also want to uh, uh, highlight uh, our uh, activities uh, in providing uh, financial services to the uh, local uh, company. Um, as we know, we have uh, the, the, the loan program, but also we have something very interesting and I feel very uh, happy about because it started two years ago uh, to help as well homeowners and not just companies. So we have ambitions that we want the, the, the family, the, the, the family to start growing at home. That's why we launched something called the home farming uh, product. And the, the whole idea here is that we would like uh, families to as well uh, create their own small greenhouse that could be high tech as well. Uh, and uh, have a vegetable farm inside their house. Uh, in, in, in Qatar, if, if, the, if, if people have been visiting Doha, they would understand that you know a lot of people live in, 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 in villas, and villas will have usually space in the gardens or in their roof, where a small unit can be placed as a home farm. Uh, and you know we have a specialized project, a product towards that where uh, a homeowner can basically apply to Qatar Development Bank for a loan to get to, to build a small greenhouse and as well get education. So the, 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 it's not just about getting the greenhouse, but as well, there is a, a course, uh, a training course, which is two to three days where the, the, the wife or the, or, the, or the husband or the son or the daughter would attend the, uh, the, uh, this two or three day uh, training session to understand how to farm, because many people don't know, you know how to farm and how to take care and how to maintain a greenhouse. So this is very important. Uh, and it's also an integral part of the program. And as well, perhaps this is an area that we can reach out to US companies to help us with the training and as well with some of the technologies that happen uh, with small units, uh, small farming units in domestic homes. Uh, a third thing that we have is, is as well the farm owners here in Qatar. Qatar is, 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 is a desert uh, country, as we all know. There are not many, uh, uh, there's not a lot of rain in Qatar and there's not a lot of, uh, uh, well, it's not the ideal environment for, for, for farming. However, the open, open, um, uh, open field farm. Uh, however, we have uh, in Qatar uh, not a small number of farms. We have in the country around 1,300 registered farms in, in, in Qatar. Uh, and uh, Qatar Development Banks provides a specific product to the farm owners uh, where they can get the loan within one day uh, at a 1% interest rate. And the farm owner uh, has to dedicate this 1 million rial, which is equivalent to about 270,000 US dollars, uh, to build the greenhouse. Uh, and this is a loan where it's there and, uh, and people, all farm owners have access to, 
this loan and it doesn't require too much of work and it doesn't require any feasibility studies or other documents like we require from, from our other uh, applications at, at the bank. So this is something that we are also having and we are currently thinking of increasing the farm uh, loan from, uh, from 1 million real uh, to 2 million real. So from $270,000 to about $540,000 to make it bigger and make it a little bit more high tech. So I just wanted Mohammed to give a little bit of a feel about what's going on in the bank and what's going on in Qatar Development Bank. Um, and I'm looking forward maybe to any questions or anything that you might have uh, coming up in, the, in this uh, session. Thank you, thank you, Khalid. I mean, just listening to these points and, and, and what Qatar Development Bank has been doing in many, in many sectors. I mean, our previous uh, webinar and several others, but this one in agriculture business always raise more questions. And, I, and I'm going to have a few questions coming uh, at, uh, after, after we go uh, at the end of this panel. Um, but it's, it's fascinating, always, always listening to, to more advancements and what uh, Qatar Development Bank and Qatar uh, itself is doing to be self-sufficient and as well, um, even though that working with the international partner, but knowing that thing, there's things that continue more and more. And, and I heard many stories. I mean, we heard it from the Americans in advance um, to, uh, that Qatar has dealt with the blockade in 2017. But as well, that was a learning curve as when COVID-19 hit, Qatar was more prepared than many, many other nations, I would say, because they had dealt with, with similar situation in a way or another. And I'm going to have more questions in, 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 on what QDB can do uh, with that. But I want to um, uh, go now to uh, uh, Mr. Mubarak Rashid Sahuti, the Executive Director of Commercial Relationship at Hassad Food. Um, uh, Mr. Mubarak will cover um, one of the fascinating programs that Qatar established, Hassad Food, for food security um, advancements, working with partners locally and internationally as well to uh, fulfill many of the national uh, uh, security food uh, program, Qatar National Security Food Program, um, the vision, uh, uh, Qatar Vision 2030, that includes as well a lot of self-sufficiency, uh, uh, working with many international partners. Um, uh, Mr. Mbarak um, uh, um, has very wide, diverse professional experience working on the tenders, the contracts, uh, uh, plants evaluation, um, managing production uh, process and food marketing. Um, he uh, as well held many key positions uh, at Qatar General Electricity and uh, Water Collaboration uh, Co Corporation, Kahrama. Um, he is as well the chairman of the Qatari Tunisian Company for Food Industries, um, a board member of National Food Company, and as well board member of the Arab Qatari Company for Agricultural Production. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mbarak uh, have a bachelor degree in management and economics from Qatar University and uh, many, many years of experience and professional learning experiences and from many institutions. Mr. Mbarak, uh, uh, thank you for being with us today uh, to highlight Hassad Food and Hassad Food programs, and we're looking forward uh, to hear from you uh, today. Please. Thank you, Mr. Mohammed. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. First of all, I'm happy to join this webinar, special with the United States uh, area, which uh, Hassad Radar uh, focusing uh, in this area, especially this uh, year. Uh, first of all, uh, Hassad uh, uh, or Qatar Investment Authority established Hassad in 2008, focusing investing in, in the food sector uh, as a, a government or semi-government arm in this uh, sector, so uh, locally and uh, uh, international. Hassad has uh, has uh, uh, some investing in, in in Qatar, which many area and many sector. Uh, in, in uh, green field or uh, fruit and vegetable, uh, vegetable and also uh, animal feed, uh, also some uh, operating uh, uh, processing for uh, vegetable, uh, and at the end for also established uh, uh, the central market to selling these uh, uh, items or Qatar food. 
let me uh, starting with or let me uh, continue with uh, international uh, hasad uh, investing we can say about the strategic if we, we want to speak about the hasad strategic uh, investing for especially uh, out, outside or international uh, hasad has in australia uh, uh, investing and also in turkey or canada and there are many countries we have a sharing in the in the, some uh, companies special in uh, food uh, we are interesting uh, to invest or find uh, uh, companies in uh, united states special in uh, uh, food technology as mr khaled he mentioned uh, the food technology is very important and they are and, uh, looking for companies which can provide their technology in Qatar. Hassad uh, willing to find these companies, invest with their uh, equity or their capital, uh, and uh, sharing with them their successful and bring their technology in Qatar to support Qatar food security or uh, support the farming Qatar. Uh, especially in, in uh, the technology we are looking and uh, uh, starting from including farming and both or farm and management or electron, electronic trade uh, platform. These uh, three keys, we are willing to find these companies. Uh, we, Hassad, it's not uh, interesting to, to start with a, a starting company or from the zero. We are looking for the companies which already they have established and they have successful history. We can uh, uh, join with them. Uh, we are focusing the um, minority uh, uh, share with this company uh, to be uh, a shareholder uh, in, uh, with these companies. Uh, this is the general uh, information. Uh, also, Hassad uh, prefer uh, uh, the listing company, uh, which is uh, more more really, uh, transparent uh, companies, which we can find it easily in the, in the market. So now we are focusing in the United States with this uh, company. Other, other investing uh, area also, processing company or uh, uh, the companies which they have investing in many sector in, in, in food uh, uh, investing. Uh, we are not interested to, to uh, investing with the company which only green field or only agriculture uh, area. Uh, this one takes a long time to to uh, to work and uh, it has many many challenge we are uh, comfortable to find the companies which uh, uh, more in the processing uh, marketing or they have manufa manufacturing uh, uh, and food uh, uh, sector this is the other uh, uh, strategic also uh, in, in hassad looking for but now mainly we are looking for the technologic uh, food uh, companies. This is from our side uh, in short uh, period. Thank you. Thank you, Mubarak. I appreciate uh, uh, highlighting what Hassad uh, is and what they're looking for specifically from the U.S. market. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. To, it's, and and, and what, what, I, what I noticed and from what you were telling us today that Hassad knows exactly what they're looking for from the United States, which is makes it easier for everyone. Hopefully, people from our participants today, uh, companies in, in in the in the West Coast and Silicon Valley, in in some of these uh, 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 fields that you mentioned, um, but as well across the United States, knowing that uh, Hassad uh, have a specific focus, they know exactly what they're looking for. Uh, the specific, uh, the processing, the manufacturing. Uh, the uh, uh, processing in, uh, in, in the food industry uh, is what you're looking for. The, uh, the size of the companies being listed. All these are valuable information that usually companies don't get uh, uh, easily. They, they still try to uh, usually figure it out before uh, they reach out to you. But now we have some solid background that they can base their communication with you uh, with your team uh, in in Qatar on that side, um, I have I have um, a few questions for my for both of my guests today. 
Um, and I, I want to start uh, uh, with uh, with you, Khaled, if you don't mind. Um, so you mentioned um, a lot of the uh, programs that Qatar Development Bank has been working on um, in advancing the tech, uh, working with companies. Um, what do you see, and, and as that applies also to Hassab, but what, what do you see the, the trend uh, from, from these uh, food, secu- from food security pr- uh, perspective within the companies that comes to Qatar Development Banks? Is there a specific trend that you um, have identified at QDB uh, in, in that, uh, in, on that sector, the food security? Yes, Mohammed, it's an interesting uh, question uh, that, you know, as uh, Qatar has been uh, building its food security, it's, it's, it's been, I mean, the, the massive uh, building has happened only in the past three years. So if you look at it before 2017, the, 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 the trend was really more about um, how to uh, build a, um, a company that is small how to build a company that is uh, maybe within um, the reach of family and friends, maybe a small company that does um, uh, specific uh, items like uh, cakes and biscuits and stuff like that. Uh, However, now the trend is more about uh, what's important for the nation uh, and what is important uh, to keep uh, feeding, uh, you know, 3 million people in Qatar uh, Every day. Now, the challenge as well that comes with this is that you know you can reach the, uh, this very quickly, and Qatar is a small country; it's not a big country, and uh, you will need to develop uh, ways and support in the in the in the country for companies to grow be, beyond Qatar, and not also only within Qatar. Uh, and I think this is where we will uh, face some challenges because. As uh, the Dosser and Barak mentioned, I think earlier, was that we reached a good number in terms of uh, what the country needs domestically. Uh, however, now what? Uh, these uh, the commercial entities need to grow, need to survive, and they also need to to grow in order, you know, to reach their ambitions of being uh, profitable and making. Uh, it's uh, uh, more, uh, you know, beneficial for the shareholders. So we've cut, in, in QDB, we have a, a very important section, one of the most important sections, which is called Tasdir. I don't think, Mohammed, you've, you've, you've got them as a, as a guest speaker yet, but I'm sure there will be one yeah. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the future. And Tasdir is a very important co- component of, of what we do in, the, in Qatar Development Bank to bring the local companies into the, you know, the, the world, help them export, participate in trade shows, create matchmaking uh, opportunities uh, in different countries, from Africa to Asia to the United States to Europe. Uh, we, I'll give you an example. We participate uh, in a big trade show in Germany called Anuga, which is one of the biggest food shows in, 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 the, in the world. And we take with us about 30 local companies, uh, free of charge. We give them each space in the, in the conference, and we try to promote them as an exporter in, uh, in, in this event. So it's that type of things that we're trying to do. And the trend, honestly, is that companies are getting more professional. Companies are getting more uh, to the level that you see uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a good supermarket uh, yeah. in Europe or in the United States. You can mm-hmm. see the Qatari products make it uh, and be uh, visible and be uh, admired and appreciated. So quality is, is, ha- is happening, I think, as well right. at a very fast pace. Thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, interesting how, how you describe it, the timing and uh, the moving from one uh, to another three years ago and today and, and all that. And speaking of the uh, exporting, we, we actually did a small webinar about uh, exporting uh, companies with QDB uh, a few weeks back, trying to do matchmaking with some American companies. There were specific sectors that might be not, I don't think they were on covering the agriculture but or the food, but uh, there was uh, many other sectors. 
lectures that's covered in that one. We would like to do more in covering these uh, these parts. Uh, in, um, and I, I want to go to uh, to you, Mubarak, in here. Um, you, you have mentioned how much Hassad has has done. I mean, 2008, uh, it was established, and they started working and in investing in many countries and many companies. Um, where do you see uh, Hassad today uh, when it comes to the um, agriculture output? Uh, was what was the challenges um, from 2008 till today? Um, in, 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 in the success actually in supporting these uh, uh, agriculture in the agriculture sector, either by investing in, in many of these companies that you mentioned that you invested, what was the challenges that you have noticed? And, and hopefully there were some Americans and what was the success that, you know, you feel like Hassad is proud of these successes that uh, you have done in, the, in that investment? Uh. First of all, I want to take this opportunity to thank QDB with uh, supporting uh, the local uh, market and lo local uh, companies to be successful and uh, for uh, inside or outside, which also we get this benefit from them. Uh, regarding Hassad, uh, the main things which we uh, brought, we, we, we reach it, that we built a company can be distribute all the local market uh, vegetable, which uh, they were they, they were uh, uh, suffering and facing many problems. How to uh, uh, market or distribute or sell their product? As you know, the farmer only doing farming, but marketing, selling, they are facing uh, uh, yeah, many, many, things, many problems. So we uh, create a company, we call it Mahasil. Uh, this company uh, take it, buying the, the product, making uh, a, a good uh, backing, sell it in a shelf with a good image for the local uh, product in Qatar, which support this uh, farm uh, let them to fo uh, focus on their farming, invest more, increase their product, increase their quality to reach the, uh, for example, the, the Europe equality always the top. Now we found some uh, many farmers now be reaching with this uh, quality. Hassad, uh, the challenge which we, what we are facing, how we uh, support the uh, uh, the private sector to be successful in, in general in Qatar. Uh, as I mentioned, we, we uh, built or we developed the central market. This central market is focusing mainly for the local uh, product. For example, the fish, the fish product, farming product, and also livestock uh, product. So we make uh, we we develop a three three sector uh, or three three kind of of central market, each one focusing for this uh, sector. Uh, this kind of of business little bit dif difficult to be how to be uh, invest in 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 uh, in uh, 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 platform or an area which usually it's difficult to be successful or profitable way. This is the challenge what we are facing. Uh, in our private uh, uh, investor, uh, for example, the, uh, the area of, of uh, uh, Qatar and the, the water and also the planet, it's a little bit difficult facing uh, uh, many, many uh, uh, difficulty to be uh, comfortable and giving uh, a good, uh, good um, product. So we are looking for the technology. We are trying to, to uh, uh, invest in, in searching how we can find the technology which we uh, increase our product uh, and reduce the water uh, consumption. Thank you, thank you. That, that gives a, a, a lot of highlights and it's fascinating to see the difference between the successes and some of the uh, challenges. And, and that's, and of course, like every country has their own challenges, but you know, there's specific challenges that faces Qatar um, because of what you mentioned, which is uh, uh, great. Um, I, I know 
I mean, all the things that you guys have mentioned to us today, there's, I mean, I would say this panel um, can go on and on, but for the sake of time, and then I know we have also uh, more guest speakers to, to talk today, I just want to maybe ask you this in, in, for both of you and, and give us a highlight, how these American companies can you know, engage with you? How can they uh, pursue some of these ag tech uh, opportunities that you mentioned and discussed and, 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 and presented? Who do they contact? Do they work with you directly? I know they can, of course, reach out to the commercial attache office and they get to you, but how can they find more about these ag, ag opportunities and uh, getting in touch? To answer a lot of their questions that came from uh, uh, probably today uh, panel. From my side, always the channel is open, especially with US Qatar Business Council, and you are welcome if they want to go uh, come in through you. Uh, you are welcome to get any information, any uh, link with uh, the higher management or the decision maker. Uh, always you are welcome. This is from our side, Hassan. Thank you. That's great. Khaled. As well, I think from, from QDB um, as well, I think uh, I mentioned my, the Tasdeer team in QDB, the export promotion team in QDB, has uh, several fantastic events that are uh, available uh, even now virtually uh, for, um, and they're specific. So one would be on, uh, let's say, plastic, the plastic sector. And I'm sure they have two or three events uh, annually on the global sector. I don't have them right now, but they're on the QDB website. And these are good events for matchmaking, good events to understand what's going on, and good events to see the private players in Qatar. And usually once we have a business idea or a business concept, then QDB could be a bank uh, for uh, these ideas. Thank you, thank you, Mubarak. Thank you, Khaled. Um, uh... Um, I know that a lot of these investments, and then I'm going to move to the next side, but I wanted to uh, end this panel by saying, I know a lot of these investments and on a lot of the points that you mentioned, you know, the saturation in the Qatari market, and we're going internationally marketing these products, but always knowing for our American companies, uh, if they're considered Qatar, either an investment in technology or passing on technology, um, that Qatar as a market has offered an, an, an umbrella reach for more than 800 million people, the regional reach uh, from Qatar. Uh, as a regional hub, uh, the free zones that they established, the logistical zones. And I know that there's a lot of collaboration between QDB, Hazad Food, uh, the investment promotion agency, of course, and uh, Qatar Airways, the shipping, uh, Hamad port, one of the biggest ports, and a lot of these things that we heard about, um, you know, offer uh, a big market for exporting from Qatar. Uh, so the investments in Qatar is not just going to Qatar, but it could become international, especially with the programs, fascinating programs that Hassad Food and, and QDB uh, has discussed and mentioned today. And we appreciate their willingness to talk to you and uh, present these opportunities all the time. Um, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Khaled, al for uh, your uh, presentation today. And I know we'll come at the end for more probably uh, uh, thoughts on this. Uh, Mr. Mbarak as well, thank you on behalf of Hassad for this part of the panel. Um, and I wanna now uh, ask our uh, co-host, uh, Nick uh, Sramik uh, from Silicon Valley Forum uh, to, to cover the next part of our uh, uh, webinar today, a case study, uh, uh, Nick, Thank you very much and thank you all for that wonderful discussion and um, I'm going to turn it over to our case study in one second um, and some of this may be very redundant since I think our audience here is quite sophisticated but I just wanted to quickly outline a few of the uh, of the, the the main issues around ag tech that I personally am so excited about and uh, and, and, and feel that there's a an ag tech solution for so um, the, these are just some really high in, uh, really interesting high, high level numbers from the the UN Food and Agriculture Organization uh, program, and uh, and th this is this is where we're heading as as a as a world, and and some of the challenges that not only uh, uh, Qatar but the whole world will have to deal with around uh, sustainability to meet the the, the huge increased demand, uh, natural resources that uh, will be have to be protected in, in, in a greater way, addressing climate change and uh, the intensification of natural hazards, the eradication of poverty and inequality. 
um, ending hunger and malnutrition and, um, and make, making sure our food systems are more efficient, inclusive and resilient. So um, all of these things are, are, are very important to our food systems, our food safety and security and ag tech is a solution to that. So I, probably a lot of you have seen this picture before and I will not go through this. It will be impossible to do so in uh, the two or three minutes that I wanna spend right now. But um, as you can tell, um, ag tech has really taken over the entire farm and uh, it's, it's gotten to the point where there is a solution for, for, um, for any sort of issue that, that, uh, that, can, that has been uh, um, arising on, on the farm. And uh, there's a host of, of uh, really interesting companies, both in Silicon Valley and around the world that are looking to address these. And this is a, a brief snapshot of what the ag tech landscape looks like back in 2019. This was put together by Better Food Ventures. Um, the, the, these sort of maps are hard to, to digest all at once, but I find them really fascinating because if you look at what the ag tech landscape was even 10 years ago, it would be a, a, just a fraction of, of what we're seeing here today. So uh, we're really excited to, uh, to, to see just how far this industry has grown over the past decade and uh, and what it still has to accomplish, but what it's, what it's able to do already in areas like precision irrigation, water monitoring, IoT, labor management, and some of the, the key issues that are, are driving agriculture uh, going forward. Um, investment has gone way up where this is through 2019, 2020 is going to see a little bit of a dip as well, but ag tech has, uh, ha has continued to, uh, to, to be an area of investment in the US and around the world, which is just a great sign that this is a very resilient area. And as, as our panelists mentioned, you know, COVID has, has done one thing for agriculture. It showed that we really do need safe, secure, resilient food systems in order for our communities to thrive. And specifically within the, within the MENA region, and this was touched on by the panelists as well, uh, just really scratching the surface of where ag tech can, can play a role. I, I thought this chart was quite interesting about uh, how uh, water resources have diminished uh, over the past few decades within the MENA region. So from countries like Qatar to uh, uh, Kuwait, UAE, Saudi Arabia, uh, all of them have seen just a massive uh, uh, drop in their, uh, the, their, their domestic water resources. Uh, luckily, ag tech in, in many different areas within the ag tech ecosystem uh, the, it addresses water shortages and irrigation technology so that uh, water can be preserved, used in a, uh, a very uh, efficient manner, and also uh, there'll be uh, less uh, runoff into uh, streams, rivers, into the ocean. So indoor agriculture is a starting point. Uh, UAE has done a huge investment into indoor agriculture, as has Qatar, and uh, more of that to come. But there is uh, so many different areas besides uh, indoor agriculture that uh, should and, and are being explored in the region and in Qatar. So uh, hydroponics we've mentioned, water conservation and irrigation technology, connected farms, labor optimization, supply chain and efficiencies. And and uh, down the road, alternate proteins is, is where we're heading. Um, so one of these uh, technologies that we are uh, going to highlight today, we're gonna uh, spotlight in one second, but I see that many of you have uh, discovered the uh, Q&A uh, button. So please go ahead and put your questions in there. We already have quite a few questions, both for our, our case study that we're having here, as well as our panelists earlier. So if you have any questions along the way, pop them in there. We'll get to them at the end of this hour. If we can't get to them there, we'll get back to you later on. And with that, I'd love to introduce um, our case study for today. Uh, Jess Bollinger is the VP of Strategic Partnerships with a wonderful company that's been around for a few years and made quite a name for itself, Arable Labs. So uh, Jess is gonna talk a little bit today about what Arable does and some of the uh, potential um, uh, applications to a country like Qatar. So uh, Jess, why don't you take it away? Thanks, Nick, for the introduction. I'm yeah honored to be included among this panel. It's a prestigious group. I'm going to share my screen if that's okay. Um, so we started Arable uh, about five or six years ago now um, with the need to have better weather data and infield data on crop health and how crops were maturing throughout the season. Um, and with that, um, you know, we built a very small device that you're seeing here on the left side of the screen and it weighs about three pounds. And so the intention is that it can ship anywhere in the world. It's pretty inexpensive. 
um, to get to different locations and it connects through global cellular to immediately start uh, sending back information about how the plant is performing in the, the field. Um, so it will collect information on traditional weather parameters, uh, temperature, relative humidity. Um, it does precipitation by listening to the sound of the rainfall as it hits the dome of the device. Um, but then it also has a bunch of plant sensing um, inputs on it as well. Um, so infrared thermometers and a seven band spectrometer um, that allows us to really track crop health and performance throughout the season. All this is to say that we can pull in um, really great analytics that help us understand exactly um, how the crop is growing and what is it experiencing. Um, and we can divide these up to look at, you know, how much precipitation is received by different growth stages. Um, we can detect, you know, how much water stress the plant is experiencing. Um, using the same device, we can connect third party sensors to look at soil moisture, soil temperature, um, press, pressure switches for irrigation runtime. Um, and in that vein, it has a lot of applicability to greenhouse operations um, and really being able to fine tune and control um, exactly the amount of water that the plant needs um, by growth stage. Because of the ability to track the NDVI or the biomass on the device using spectral sensors pointed at the canopy, um, we use that to approximate the amount of vegetative area that um, can transpire water um, through evapotranspiration. Um, and that gives us an indication based on the weather forecast and weather data that we're collecting, how much water is going to be lost by the crop over the upcoming week. Um, and allows for managers to um, add in the exact right amount of water that they want um, to apply to the crop to deliver um, the growth that they expect, but then also fine tune it for the amount of stress that they want for high value specialty crops. Um, and so we've really taken a very holistic approach to water balance. Um, we're measuring um, the plant, the soil, the weather, precipitation, and then any water inputs. Um, and we're also defining web water inputs by growth stage. So we make it really easy to um, optimize the water use by what exactly the crop needs um, for the growth stage that it's in. Um, so during certain points of a plant's phenological process or cycle, um, they are going to need more water to produce yield. And then oftentimes in the latter half of the season, um, they don't need as much water because they're, you know, going into that period where they're producing the fruit and maturing. Um, and so it, the system is, you know, meant to make it so that your really conserving water um, and using only what you need. Um, and this is really important for the growers that we work with in California, and then also with some of the irrigated corn growers that we work with in Western Nebraska, um, just because they're over aquifers that are um, becoming more limited into how much water they can pump out in a given season. And there's a, you know, a higher and higher cost every year to being able to pump out that water. Um, there's a few other cool things that we can do. So because we have this spectrometer pointed at the plant canopy. Um, we can see the biomass on a daily basis and as it's changing over time. Again, we can track it against the growth stage so you can see if a crop is underperforming, um, you know, pretty much, you know, as soon as the season starts. Um, and this makes it, you know, uh, you know, more possible to uh, take micro decisions and, you know, apply different treatments and different chemicals um, to help crops catch up um, and have that yield optimization that you want um, to increase profitability for the farmer. Um, yep, so just, I think, you know, because we collect all this data on the, the crop and the uh, plant itself, it becomes easy to start to compare different locations, how they're performing, what crops are right for different locations, um, and more here about, you know, how we can pull in all the different information to start reducing water and energy costs. Um, and just showing quickly here, you know, it's really easy using the NDVI to start to track when a plant is performing suboptimally. And like I said, if there's something you can do to, you know, put in a, a, a fungicide treatment or, you know, some type of growth regulator to change performance trajectory, um, it becomes uh, much easier to optimize pro for profitability for the growers. Um, so I'll stop there and turn it back over to Nick.
All right. Well, thank you so much, Jess. That's uh, very helpful as uh, as a case study of, of one application of AgTech, one of uh, hundreds out there of, of what's happening in this, in this space right now that could have applications for a country like Qatar. And uh, maybe, Jess, if you could uh, just touch on from your experience, um, you know, what, what one issue that we've been speaking on on this call is uh, food security and uh, and uh, adding predictability to any sorts of uh, organic system is tough to do, but is is very valuable. Um, how, how does Arable, uh, as an example, um, allow for, for growers to have more predictability in the way that they, uh, they conduct their business? It's a great question. And we see it at two different tiers. Um, so the data that I was just showing really helps with the operational aspects of, you know, being able to track what the inputs are, what the weather is, and your expectation of how the plant is going to perform. Um, but then having that closed feedback loop of looking at the spectral data, the infrared sensors, and seeing the canopy temperature and the amount of biomass generated, you know, for each of the growth stages, and you know, having that mental model of is this what I would have expected for this time? And if it's not, being able to take that immediate action to, um, you know, change the course or uh, improve the performance of the product. And there's so many different imp inputs, biologicals, um, you know, new tools coming out that really can help if you have the information at the right time to make that behavior change. Hmm. I would say at the second level, what we're seeing now with some of our customers that are, you know, these large CPG companies that are producing food around the world is that they're looking from a procurement perspective and a food security perspective of being able to have um, all of the, uh, you know, looking for I guess I wouldn't say like disasters, but you know, adverse weather events that are going to impact supply chains, but being able to have then another level up of this data that tells them, you know, 80% of your farms are at this growth stage, this, this year, you know, uh, location in Malaysia experienced this typhoon at this point and it's you know caused this much of the crop to be damaged and really having a much more comprehensive tool of understanding okay we're you know we're the supply side fluctuation on this side has really impacted what we would expect to be getting um, so how can we make it up and how can we more immediately take a step back and say you know what can we do to fulfill you know what we're trying to achieve for this uh, you know this period of time. Mm, interesting. Um, so one other question I had for you, and I think you, you touched on it briefly in your presentation, was about um, how easy it is to, to get a technology like Arables onto a farm. So I think ag tech can be broken down into two big areas. One is a high infrastructure costs and low infrastructure costs. And it seems like Arable is more on the low infrastru infrastructure costs where countries, growers, don't need to necessarily put a lot of infrastructure to have the, some of these abilities that Arable is able to achieve. Yep, exactly. Um, that was, I think, one of the issues that I saw with precision agriculture and um, some of the decision support tools is that they heavily relied on remotely sensed data sets. So information you would get from satellites, um, weather forecasts. Um, and when we think of that in the United States, it's, you know, weather forecasts are great. Um, but then in lots of parts of the world, um, they just don't have the ground stations and the infrastructure that is here. And so the weather forecasts are really hard to use to make decisions. Um, and so decision, what we were seeing were that like a lot of the precision ag tools weren't having the adoption that you would expect. And it's just because the data wasn't precise enough to really help drive the decisions that, you know, it was trying to on the field. Um, and with that in mind, it's also, you know, it's hard to have just obstacles out in the field when you're moving tractors through them. Um, and so the concept was really to combine those two challenges and have something very small, easy to use, easy to ship, one button that would connect anywhere and make it uh, really easy for the growers to have their field information feed into those models that a lot of these great companies and startups are developing um, so that they could start to adopt those tools um, and use those levers and feel like it did reflect what was happening in their fields. Wonderful, wonderful. That's uh, that's interesting. We, and we're going to go go ahead and move on to Q and A just out, out of a uh, uh, sake of uh, being on time or as near to on time as we can. So if I can ask uh, Mr. Khalid and uh, Mr. Mubarak to uh, come back onto the screen, I'd appreciate it. And uh, we have a few questions here. If anyone else has any questions that uh, they'd like to ask any of our panelists. Uh, feel free to, to drop them into the box. And the first one I have here, and uh, this, I think Mr. Collard or Mr. Mr. Mubarak, uh, you could answer one of these two. Um, and the first one is uh, from uh, someone that is anonymous, but uh, well, th th this question is quite interesting. Uh, uh, what does Qatar still need to develop 
gets agriculture sector to fully realize this na national vision. So uh, this person is thinking in terms of technology, but also in terms of imports. So, so what, what else is really needed to the, uh, achieve these great visions that, uh, that the country has right now? Uh, Mr. Uh, Khalid, uh, maybe you could, you could address that. That's a big, big question. Uh, the, um, definitely, I think uh, there's a lot of space to go. Um, so if you're talking about agriculture, uh, where, where do you develop? Do you develop the genes and the seeds and that, that part of, the, of, of, of agriculture in order to develop a country that's more sustainable and has its own homegrown projects um, within? That's definitely an area that we would uh, like to perhaps uh, look at and explore. Um, the genetics of, of agriculture. And then as well, uh, going into the another area, and I think there's another question, because Qatar is very scarce in water. So how can we uh, utilize water more efficiently and as well uh, in a way that is um, more uh, uh, targeted towards uh, making, uh, you know, agricultural growth uh, is very, uh, you know, saving the waste in the, in, the, in the water life cycle is very, I think, very important. Um, another area that I, I feel is also very important is the diversification of our agriculture. Because in Qatar, we already have, I think, a very good um, uh, line or a very good um, um, uh, energy and movement with, uh, with vegetables. But about, what about grains and what about you know, rice, which is also something that we eat a lot here in Qatar. The, the, there are, these are not something that we have in, 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 in full capacity and we don't have enough to feed the, the country. So although ag vegetables are moving, there are certain uh, you know, uh, agriculture components that we don't have. Mm. And those gaps are, are present. Interesting. Uh, and Mr. Mubarak, maybe you can uh, jump in on the, from the perspective of Hassad Foods, uh, needed imports and needed technologies to really achieve these visions. Actually, both of them, uh, we need it uh, to Qatar. For example, the input of, of agriculture, uh, fertilizer and uh, pesticide, uh, these things, uh, also the, these things, we need it, uh, especially now that the agriculture is moving here in Qatar. Uh, the main things, as Mr. Khalid mentioned, that uh, technology, what's the technology available? We can use it to create environment uh, producing uh, 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 the maximum quant the maximum quantity of uh, uh, vegetable and square meter with less water using this is the main challenge uh, where what you can uh, find it also yeah it's good to Qatar mm, mm, absolutely uh, um, the, so let's move on to another question here as uh, so we have a couple more minutes so we probably won't get to all these but if you have any other questions feel free to pop them in and we'll get to them uh, afterwards as well. So um, one question here I have on the bottom is um, what is the best way for technology companies that provide solutions in water conservation or in seed genetics uh, to engage with Qatar? So uh, we, we addressed that before. Um, USQVC is one resource. Um, um, any, anything else you'd recommend if we have uh, some technology providers out there that think they may be able to help? So it, it depends whether the technology providers are looking for business or whether the technology providers are looking for R&D funds. And I think both are available. For the R&D funds, we have several uh, institutions. A very important one would be the Qatar Science and Technology Park, which is part of the Qatar Foundation. And a big uh, area that has been there was as well uh, uh, the, the water. Uh, story and how, how we can you know, develop water. Uh, there is a, as well, uh, a, an agriculture component within the Qatar Foundation, which is also very um, uh, important. Yes, I do see the cat as well. Behind okay. this. <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the, the uh, so these two are very important, I think, in terms of the, uh, of the R&D. For uh, businesses, I mentioned that you mentioned the Qatar Business Council is very important. Uh, 
stakeholder, I think it would be perhaps the best uh, focal point for U.S. companies uh, trying to enter public. Mm. Wonderful. And uh, we had one more question here that uh, I wanted to address before we uh, we, we we close out this session. And uh, Mr. Mubarak, maybe you can address it. Um, uh, what is the market for organic foods and uh, and crops in Qatar and the MENA region? Um, are there certifiers and regulatory agencies that are involved in this right now? Uh, one of uh, the uh, sector what we are looking to invest also in organic business. Mm. Uh, when we study it, we find it's a, it's a good business booming in the worldwide in the world. Uh, Qatar uh, in Qatar it's uh, starting to be uh, get a, a share a good share in in the market now uh, every market you will find some uh, uh, organic uh, uh, food uh, and, and many in different things by meats uh, fruit and vegetable grain many things I find it uh, uh, it's coming يعني, increasing day by day in Qatar so that it's good uh, to be to enter uh, Qatar market, and Qatar market is easy to enter. Uh, Qatar area easy to cover all Qatar by this uh, uh, selecting the area where, where you can be selling this uh, uh, organic uh, food. So uh, it's a good opportunity for this sector. Well, fantastic. So it looks like that the it's an open field right now for uh, what's possible in terms of organics in the region, that there's some activity, there's a lot of interest um, and a lot of opportunity. Uh, I want just I want to add something. If when we uh, when I mention about the technology, agriculture technology, uh, not only including not only uh, not only for the fruit and vegetable, also for the livestock animal uh, technology, it's uh, important to, to Qatar. Absolutely. It's a good point. Great. Well, um, I think that's uh, all the time we have for today. So um, Jess, Mr. Khalid, Mr. Uh, Mubarak, thank you all so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. And with that, um, I'll turn it over to Mohammed. Thank you, Nick. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, what a fantastic uh, event today. We learned so much. We learned so much about what we've, uh, Qatar is doing and what American companies can do and work with Qatar. Uh, very uh, interesting opportunities and very interesting indicators. We learned about uh, uh, some of the case studies from just today where we, 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 we learned so much. Nick as well, thank you for the presentation uh, on, on some of these indicators uh, and numbers. Um, we're very glad to be able to put this together. Uh, we hope that everyone today participated uh, learn something and we'll reach out uh, to uh, any of the uh, uh, participants today. The U.S. Qatar Business Council is ready to answer questions. The Office of the Commercial Attaché here in Washington, D.C. and his team will be glad to uh, as well speak to you and answer some of your questions. Uh, both entities, QDB, QDB website, as Mr. Khaled mentioned, uh, mentioned uh, and from Hassad Food, Mr. Mubarak. We really appreciate you being with us. We look forward to do more of this and there will be always more, as I always say with, the, with Qatar, there's always new things. So thank you so much uh, everyone for being with us today, the time and, uh, and our uh, guest speakers.